Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about onboarding. Um, and you know, and why about onboarding? Because as the world continues to evolve, um, you know, especially in, in remote and global environments and teams, um, really the experience of our people and our organizations is changing. And so it's important to think about how that onboarding experience is going to be different now. And so today I'm going to do, or we're going to do a bit of a deep dive in terms of the nuances, some of the challenges and really opportunities to create a really great onboarding experience um, in a remote environment um, and to create, um, you know, really strong connections and set our people for success. Um, but before we dive in, let me introduce myself. I'm Liam. I'm the head of talent at Athena. Um, and just to share a bit about me, I worked for the last 15 years in talent acquisition, um, you know, with multiple teams, global, local, regional, love working with people with, with many and multiple experiences and, and from different cultures and backgrounds. Um, and I'm a big fan of coffee. I always say that you don't see me with a cup of coffee in my hand today, but I always have one. Um, and I've recently become the dad of a puppy. So if you hear some, hear some barking and crying on the background, you know that's why. Um, now, having introduced myself, you know, this is a bit of the agenda that we're going to review and walk through, um, you know, the content today. Um, we're going to talk about the planning. We're going to talk about how to welcome someone and really the things that you need to do. Um, we need to do to set people up for success. Um, you know, why communications are important, you know, defining the goals and the objectives for those individuals and having them really feel do, that they belong um, and integrate um, them to our culture and organization. And then we're going to talk, go talk about um, some productivity hacks uh, and how to support uh, individuals to be successful in this remote environment. Now, you know, why is onboarding so important, right? It's always been important, but, you know, especially now, in a remote environment, um, it's not only about introducing people, it's around, you know, establishing trust, you know, ensuring that we're setting them up for success, that they feel that they belong from day one, that they're excited about the journey. Um, and, you know, there's, and you see that on the slide, right? There's a lot of data and studies around how a very well executed onboarding um, experience and process can really have a very massive impact on you know, employee retention. Um, you know, it will uh, have a higher retention of 82%. Um, you know, it's going to enhance the productivity uh, by 70%. Um, you know, so super, super important. Um, it's not only about, you know, having people feel excited and belong, but really it has a direct tangible impact uh, from the get-go for our teams and organization. Now, Preparing for the onboarding is key, right? And I would say there's two parts to this. One, there is that pre-boarding experience. The experience of people starts even before the first day, right? So, you know, make sure that, you know, you send them an email in advance, you know, you introduce your team and even have them send a, a welcome email before the person shows, you know, share information about the company, the culture, any materials that you think might be interesting if the person wants to go through that to do it in advance. You know, there's a lot of excitement, uh, eagerness, uh, and, you know, people are anxious. So make sure that you create a really positive experience uh, before that first day. Now, that's the experience for that individual before they show in. But then, you know, make sure that you are prepared as an organization, right? Um, so work on making sure that the onboarding kit is ready, right? The first day, you know, they're going to get that welcome email. Um, you know, if you have any swag that you're going to share with them, you know, that's important. Anything that's hardware, right? They have to. They, they need the right accesses accesses to the systems before they join. You know, for them to get their computer, whatever it is they need for that first day, you need to make sure that that's prepared and ready to provide that positive experience. And then also make sure that you know the agenda is ready for that at least that first week, right? You have a plan ready. You know, what are the sessions? Let the people involved know they're going to be part of that what you know what they can expect what we need from them right if you're going to have someone do a training session or an onboarding session let them know in advance make sure that's already scheduled in the agenda you know schedule the meet and greets so that the new hire in your company um, can meet the right people um, you know all of this is super important so that when they get there the first day, everything is ready and set and well organized. And that's going to, you know, help drive, um, you know, or, or, or dial down a lot of maybe the, the, the anxiousness that people have and ensure that they're, you know, excited and happy and going through that experience very, very positively. Now, come day one, um, you know, it's a day of excitement. 
um, you know, curiosity for people, some apprehension as well. Um, so we need to make sure that we have, you know, we give that people a really positive experience, um, you know, make sure that they get a welcome email um, as well during that first day, really, you know, that they feel a warm welcome. They feel very, very quickly excited. You know, they, they get a, a grasp of the company culture from day one. Um, you know, you can have them do a virtual tour so they get to know the people, the team. Um, make sure that you have that one-on-one -on -one meeting with their direct managers, right? It's going to be, you know, the, their direct manager is going to be their leader. Um, they're going to be working, of course, together. Um, it's important that they they have that conversation. They, you know, they welcome them. They set the tone for what's coming, set the expectations, you know, share the agenda for the week. Um, you know, if you have uh, a buddy, um, introduce them. I, when I show in Athena, um, you know, we have a buddy program. Um, and Tino was my buddy, our head of sales. Um, and he, that was great, right? I got together with him. We talked a lot. He was always there. He answered my questions. He guided me through my first few weeks. Um, so that was that was super, super good. And make sure that you do, at the end of the day, a quick wrap-up call, right? Check in with them on how their first day went, how they're feeling, you know, um, what's show what's coming. You can do this throughout the entire week, of course, and, and definitely recommend it. And we're going to talk about that in a bit, that you do it on ongoing basis. But definitely that first day, right? And make sure as well that, um, you know, people on the team, on the broader team, um, you know, get close to this individual, you know, create those formal introductions and interactions um, so that they can start building the, their network in the organization and so that they feel welcome and excited um, with having shown, right? That's going to be super, super important. Um, now, after that first day, and as part of the plan, of course, you know, it's important to, um, you know, to, let's say, lay the foundations for the su success of the individual. And, you know, there's a number of resources that you can have um, to do this, right? Um, training is really, you know, going to be the bridge between, um, you know, where the new hire is at when they join and all of the knowledge and skills they need to be successful. And so, you know, a few tools that you can use is an employee manual. Um, so, you know, just to share uh, my personal experience at, at Athena, when I joined, uh, we have this manual where all of the information that, you know, that I needed was there, right? And it was so good for me to navigate, to understand, you know, from the organization's vision and mission, um, to a pet directory where, you know, all of the pets from the people are there, um, you know, to procedures and to policies, right? And so I can navigate that and get all the information about the company that I needed on my own. So that was great. Um, you know, make sure that you create an, a learning agenda, training agenda um, with both, um, you know, e-learning um, and also live learning so that individuals can continue to make sure that on ongoing basis, you know, they, they, they understand the company and the culture and, um, you know, the performance model uh, and the policy. So everything they need to do to um, be successful in your organization. And finally, you know, make sure that you have performance um, instances, right? Or, or, you know, review and conversation instances where, where you can regularly touch base on how things are progressing, right? Um, how are things going? Are, you know, do they need anything from you? Is there anything that's not working that they need more support on? How are they progressing? You know, recognize any achievements that they've had so far. It's a good opportunity to, you know, set very quickly foundations for long-term success with, you know, open and early conversations about progress in the first few days. So make sure that you have those those checkpoints. It's something that's always important to do, but especially during that first, um, you know, few weeks and months, right? Especially the first few months. Um, now, that's, that's on a general level. Now, you know, it's also important that you set the foundation so that people are successful in their roles, right? Um, and so, you know, what's expected from them in their in their new role? You know, what do the processes look like that they need to follow? How do their systems work that they will use? And so, you know, it's important that you have a, a, a training, a learning experience prepared for those individuals so that they can go through that and get ready to, you know, to execute on, on what's expected of them. And there's a lot of things that you can do here, right? So, of course, you know, you can have process flows and documentations that they can review on their own, um, you know, live training with the people. But you can also do, um, you know, shadowing experiences where you have this new hire showing someone on the team to see how they're performing, you know, the work. And then vice versa, right? Hands-on training where that individual will perform the work and the activity and then someone will join and, you know, provide feedback on how they've done it and really recommend improvements and support them with that. And then, 
make sure that you continue to have those regular check-ins, right? Uh, as they progress, you know, if they have doubts, if there's anything that's unclear, make sure that you are, are also focusing on, um, you know, the, the performance in the core role, right? What they need to execute on their day-to-day -day basis. Now, you know, we've talked about sort of general training, you know, for the, you know, understanding the company, understanding the role. Um, and we've also mentioned, but it's important to reiterate, you know, communication is key, right? Staying connected with those people, especially in a remote environment, it's going to be key for the success, right? When we were in the office life, that was much, much easier. But now we need to be very intentional with creating those spaces, right? So, you know, create an environment where communication is fluid from the one, very open. You know, those regular check-ins are going to help with that. And use all of your collaboration tools for that, right? We have Slack uh, at Athena and we have multiple groups that help people stay connected. We drive certain, you know, meetings. Um, you know, that are network related to build those bridges and that, you know, that collaboration. Um, so do everything you can to keep those lines of communications open because especially in a remote environment, it's going to be key for not only the success of the individual, but that sense of belonging um, and, you know, and that engagement and that excitement to be part of the team. Um, now, you know, we, we expect... Um, people that join, and we've talked about this in a few um, in, in the previous slide. You know, they, you know, there's goals. You know, there's objectives to the role, and so you know, no matter how big or small it is, they do play, um, you know, a, a part in the success of the organization. And so, and so, making sure that individuals understand how they contribute to the organization, the purpose of the role, um, and what are the goals and the objectives is gonna be key, right? So make sure that as part of this journey, you're always being clear on setting those goals, what's expected in terms of performance, and then having those performance evaluations. That's also where those meetings with the manager early on are gonna be super important, and having those open communications is gonna drive um, a lot of these, right? And it's gonna make it easy and comfortable for, for both parties, right? For the person that's joining and for the leader um, that, that has to manage that individual. Um, and, you know, I mentioned this, creating, you know, a sense of belonging is critical, right? Um, you know, culture isn't really defined by, by physical proximity, right? We're talking about remote environments. And so it's about shared values. It's about respect, support, sense of community. And so it's important to foster this in a remote environment, um, you know, through, through different uh, activities uh, that you can drive to a sort of recreate or create some of what we're missing by not being in the office, right? So, you know, we have multiple team events at Athena that do a lot of this, right? And you can do something similar. Get together with the team, um, you know, to do maybe a praise round. Get together with the team to play a game, you know, to share about yourselves. Um, but, you know, find ways that you can really share um, you know, reinforce the company culture, the comp company values. You know, we have Slack groups where, you know, where there's different topics. I'm on, on one for movies and for, I'm, I'm on one for pets now that I have a puppy. And that really drives a lot of, you know, my sense of belonging in the company and really helps build that culture, especially being far away from people since we work in a remote environment. So that's super, super important as well. And then finally, um, uh, I would say, um, you know, think about, um, you know, the fact that in, in being in a remote environment, um, you know, it's important that we find ways to be more productive and be more successful, right? Because a lot of what happened in the office is no longer there. And so, you know, people work at home, maybe with families, um, you know, maybe they go to a coffee, you know, maybe, you know, even from the beach, right? I mean, that's the, uh, the excitement and the fun of having, you know, remote flexible settings that are super, super fun and interesting and valuable from a work-life balance pr perspective, but has its own set of challenges. And so, you know, there can be distractions. And, you know, having the right productivity tools and hacks is going to help as well, um, you know, for people to be successful. So make sure that you give them that very, very early on, right? And so, you know, tools and techniques to manage time. You know, we've just had a, 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 a training on productivity at Athena that was super interesting. You know, we talked about the Pomodoro tool uh, or technique, um, which is really good for time management. So you can use some of that. And, you know, there's a lot of tools, um, you know, that help collaborate, um, you know, make sure that you can block time on your agenda or have break times to help, you know, refresh and be more productive. 
Um, so using all of these tools and, and practices and techniques, it's going to help, you know, not only enhance productivity and efficiency, but also make ensure that people feel well um, in this remote environment. And, you know, keep in mind that onboarding is just the beginning, right? People are starting, you know, a new journey on a new job, um, you know, super exciting. And, you know, it's a big thing for each of us when we join a new company. And so we need to support individuals to this onboarding process, um, you know, make it, uh, make it a good experience for them. Um, you know, let's plan for it. Let's invest the time. Let's get people involved. Let's focus on developing the skills that individuals need to be successful and having them, um, you know, feel trusted um, and belong, that they belong to the company. Um, you know, every step, everything we do, it's going to have a big, big impact, especially in a remote environment. Um, so, you know, I hope this was um, helpful um, and thank you for your time today.